Hello, all you beautiful people. Welcome to my channel. My name is Christina Moyer. Thanks for joining me in today's kind of product comparison. So I've set up two different papers to try out some watercolors on. So I've got my watercolors I usually use um, and a new brand that I've never tried. So recently I started getting into watercolors a little bit, but I haven't done it in quite a while. And I got that nice velvet uh, brush and it was life changing for watercolors. So these are the watercolors I normally use. I bought them a couple years ago in the States on a trip and I was like, I need to do watercolor. So we got them. And at the store the other day, I was like, I want to try these Van Gogh uh, or something higher quality. And somebody suggested these. So here's the brush. Aha, there it is. <laughs> and you can use that to pop out uh, the tray. And as you can see, these are brand new and these are little half pans. And yeah, he actually suggested I get the brilliant colors, but I decided to go with this one because I'm a little bit rebellious. And <laughs> I just saw, how do you pick them out? Well, there's a little picture on the front of the paper there. So yeah, wonderful. <laughs> So I thought, let's give these a go. I usually use it out of the tube, just on kind of my tray. And then I just let them dry and then they're kind of a little bit muddy. Sometimes I add a little bit more if I need that. So it'll be really interesting for me to see how these go. So the ones I've normally used and the one that you can see above were about $10 that I just flipped over quickly, 52.50. We're talking Canadian dollars here. So a lot more expensive, especially if you're just trying out watercolors, but I've done a few watercolors before. Um, I'm not an expert and I'm kind of self-taught with it. I don't, I haven't really followed tutorials or taken classes with it. Just, you know, in school, did some watercolor projects. They weren't that great. I tend to overwork my watercolors because I'm more of an acrylic painter. If you hear any squeaking in the background, that's my puppy. He wants to be part of my videos. So I've done two of the same images, <laughs> Charlie. Uh, one is on watercolor canvas and that's the one on the left and they'll be doing a landscape with that. And then on the right, I've got this kind of rose, close up of a rose that I've drawn twice. And so let's get started with these landscapes. So you're gonna notice right away how fun it is working on watercolor canvas. Therefore, do you know the trick? Uh, I found just the more I swiped back and forth with the brush, the more it actually held on to the canvas. It's so different than working watercolor on paper. And I, like I said, I haven't done really any tutorials on it or anything, so I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go. But as I was, the more I kind of went over it, the more it kind of stuck, which is so different when you're doing the paper uh, watercolor version. So if you've never tried it, I suggest you give it a go. I, I was really dealing with a lot of frustration to begin with. Then I thought, and I thought, is this really what I want to do right now? <laughs> You'll also notice I'm getting a bunch of uh, messages on my phone while I'm trying to do this, which is really distracting. So I uh, might need to find a different way to be looking at my reference image. So this is an image that I took in the car while the car was moving. And I do this a lot. If we're driving and there's a beautiful scene, I'm just gonna get a photo of it as quick as I can. And yeah, the car's not stopped or anything. So I'm starting with the Artist Touch. So this is a brand that I got in the States uh, while we were doing a kind of a road trip. It was a bucket list trip. And I you know, really wanted to paint while we were there, but I didn't wanna bring my acrylics because that's a lot of stuff and watercolor is just a bit easier for cleanup and storage and doesn't take up much space. So I thought, let's do some watercolor, even though I hadn't done watercolor in years, <laughs> many, many years. So I thought this was kind of interesting how it pooled the color and didn't disperse it as very much. So that's kind of what is happening on this canvas. It kind of creates these little balls of color, of you know the what where the water kind of sits little pools of it and just kind of sits there and doesn't move around just if that's what you're going for like this stuff is great on this canvas and i think the whole thing was about ten dollars or so 
roughly around that and that was American dollars. So I thought, is it going to be any different working with the higher quality, artist quality uh, watercolors? Now, these aren't even the highest of the watercolor quality brands. Um, I'm not there yet for affordability. So <laughs> I'm just kind of like, okay, I want something better quality. So let's give it a go. Right away, I noticed when I did the green, obviously it was a bit of a different green, but look at that smoothness. I mean, I still had to brush back and forth a million times, but once it grow, like took hold, it really looked nice. It didn't do that pooling thing that the paints at the top did. And just the color was more vivid and I liked that a lot. And then I thought I would just take my little cloth there and pick up some of the paint so I can have some white there so I don't have to try and paint white because with watercolor you're not really supposed to paint white it's kind of this rule that I don't follow <laughs> I still use white in my watercolor paintings but it doesn't work the same as if you just pick up so called lift it's called lifting that's the word I was looking for lift the paint and it works best with a cloth, just a dry cloth that's clean. Uh, you can also lift with your brush, but you really have to clean the brush, pick up the paint, lift, dry it, and you have to keep, keep it clean and it gets uh, quickly becomes wet and that kind of thing. So you have to, that's a bit easier just to use a cloth, but there's less control with that. So if you need a lot of control, I'm turning out. And I think I actually would have just loved it if I kept it as this and without adding the other colors, but I, you know, this is about testing this paint versus this other paint. And I didn't take off enough white so that that spot I'm working on right now um, could reveal a better color because it's trying to go over blue with the yellowy orange. So that's kind of making a brown color and I don't want that in the sky. Although you might have brown in the sky, but not right here. Don't want that there so this is where i'm like hey i'm gonna use white <laughs> and i have fun using white and clouds it helps kind of to blend certain areas i find and i don't know maybe if i do some tutorials i'll learn some tricks that are better than doing this but i say just have fun with it and don't worry too much about the rules per se i don't think that these particular rules matter that much in my opinion, but that's coming from mostly an acrylic painter. So look at those two. Pretty cool. Which one do you like better? Well, let's go on to paper. And that's the rose. Could you see it? It was really fast because <laughs> I'm speeding this up. I get really um, tired of watching a video that's just too slow. So you'll notice a lot of my videos, I speed things up really quick. Um, but let me know in the comments if you prefer to see things really slow down, you know, me talking while I'm creating, but that is, that's like multitasking on a level that's a challenge, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So this is again, the artist touch. Um, it was kind of just the brand of the store, I think, like kind of the store brand, kind of one of those arts and crafts stores kind of thing, kind of big box so far. Not bad. I mean, I have done some pretty good pieces with this paint. So if you're just playing around with watercolor and you're not too worried about, you know, becoming a fine artist, then I think that it's not that bad using these kind of colors. But you will find a bit of frustration in trying to do certain tasks with watercolor, especially if you're following tutorials, which I haven't really done, but I just know that when you're following a tutorial and it's not matching what the person is saying or doing, then it can be very frustrating. And, and so if you have better quality, it works a lot better. And this brush, let me tell you, night and day than from using just a regular brush, definitely getting good watercolor brushes or just one like this one, I paint all of these paintings with the same brush. So I'd suggest, you know, definitely getting a nice watercolor brush. It's going to, that was life changing. Uh, and then this, I'll let you know what I think about uh, the, the process, the end result of 
these paints, whether I thought it was worth, you know, five times the amount uh, spent and that sort of thing. So I'm trying to build up, it was a really hot pink rose and I don't really have a, just a hot pink. So I'm just kind of trying my best to get the colors somewhat and at least the value, the values, you know, following that in the reference photo and deepening as I go. Well, the person I met in the store said I shouldn't do any layering with watercolor, but that surprised me a little bit. And I thought, what? There's no layering in watercolor? No wonder my pieces look overworked. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to be finding out more about this. And, you know, this is my artistic journey. You guys are not at the end of it. I'm in exploration mode, especially with watercolors. Um, and flowers are not that easy, I find, but, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed by some of the watercolor pieces I've seen, and it's not that forgiving. Watercolor is challenging with, when it comes to acrylics, I can just paint over something, t typically, for the most part. I mean, you have your own, it has its own challenges with acrylics, right? But um, I like to add these little details in the end, and... I do like with watercolor the magic of it. It just feels magical. You can put these pigments with water and just kind of disperse them and see what happens. And that's kind of fun. And just add a little more here and there. And then I was trying to get the background kind of, it's kind of a blurry, it's the ground because I'm looking above when I take the photo. And apparently I didn't press record for the beginning part of this, <laughs> but here the Van Gogh, um, I know that's not how you actually say his name, but I don't know if I can say the Van Gogh very well. Um, <laughs> don't judge me. Um, but I started overworking this piece, which that was the problem, but I was trying to get the more vivid pink that I had in the image. So, but again, this is just comparing the two. I'm judging myself very harshly right now and you're hearing me say that that's why I'm talking a lot about it but um I didn't love the outcome of these roses but I think that yeah you see I'm adding deepening those those values there I'm I'm having fun though somewhat but uh yeah the I found that with these Van Gogh ones I could just grab just a little bit and it would just boom be very vibrant on the page. So I really loved that. And I also loved how it smoothed out, like it kind of dispersed really nicely. This part especially. So I did a wet on wet and look at these colors. Boom. I did the same thing with the one above and which you didn't really see because I did it. <laughs> I forgot to press record, but in here I've added some color and just look at what happens with those colors on the left. Like it was just incredible. I loved it. And for these ones, I don't know if I'll use another medium to kind of enhance it. Maybe, maybe some ink. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's worth the time, but <laughs> maybe I'll just do something else, right? Uh, I think a blue flower would be really fun. Okay, wait, wait, it's time to reveal what it looks like without this ugly green tape really does throw me off sometimes having this green tape that's really not my favorite. Green's really not my favorite color. I do like green, but it's just, it's just not my favorite. I love teal. So that's almost a green, but as soon as I start peeling off the tape, it makes it even more magical because the tape takes away from it. <laughs> so as you peel, it's like, oh, suddenly my piece is so much better and I love it. <laughs> so what do you guys think about the results. So it's kind of funny to see what my husband thought of the results. And in a way I do agree, like the clouds on the top one do look really neat with that other paint because of the way that it kind of sat in those little pools. So it kind of creates some cool texture. I don't know if you could kind of work them together, but ultimately I love the smoothness and the vividness of the lower one, which was the Van Gogh. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's how I say it properly, but 
I do love that green. Like, it just makes me think dreamy. Like, when I think watercolor, that's what I think of, is that kind of smooth dreaminess, not the textured one from above. I just, I like smooth. Anyways, let's peel off the roses and see how they look without this green trim. Get that nice white edge. Just putting an edge on your piece, not only does it keep it in place, especially for watercolor, as the, you know, it can kind of warp while you're working on it. The other part that I love is it just gives this nice sharp edge that makes it look so much more professional. So let's peel the whole bit of it. What do you guys think? I love the, the hues of the top one. So the artist, um, artist touch. The one on the bottom had a more of a coral kind of pink. I, you know, I didn't go with the brilliant one that the guy said. I said, I never use pink like that. <laughs> and then my first piece, basically, I use pink. So that, that was pretty funny. So look at those colors on the left side of the rose. So much more vivid and luscious and velvety. I love that. So I'm thinking I'm going to make some really cool landscapes and have some fun with some cool skies and that kind of thing. So much fun. So ultimately, yes, I'm happy that I bought this new set of watercolors and I'm really excited to keep experimenting and maybe actually try some tutorials so that I can improve my, <laughs> learn from somebody who's an expert, that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it and I'm excited to try it some more. So I'm just examining here what I like, what I don't like. I think it turned out okay. Maybe the photograph wasn't the best choice and considering I didn't have a great pink for it, but uh, I'm not gonna judge myself too harshly. So there's the four pieces we created. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And I'm gonna try some more watercolors, but also I wanna get back to my acrylics. Let's do some time lapses for you guys. And also this month, and this is not an April Fool's thing, this month I'm going to be doing some live painting classes. So not watercolor to begin with. <laughs> At this point, it's just acrylic, but uh, we're gonna do some acrylic. So if you wanna paint with me, stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed uh, and get notifications so that you'll know when I'm going live. Uh, you can also check out my website, all my links below uh, to make sure you're staying um, in the know. You want to be in the know? Then go? Yes or no? Hmm. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful night. Thank you.